students will write chemistry practical exam. At the end of the day, they will end up failing the exam. Here are the 10 reasons why students fail chemistry practical exam. Error in the titration is the first one. So, students make a lot of errors while titrating. So, avoid errors in titration such as what? When you are titrating, you need to read the menu scores very well. You read your lower menu scores and also, if you are doing um, a redox titration, definitely you need to read your upper menu scores. So, the error in titration is actually one of the key factors or key points that makes students to score very bad in their chemistry practical. So, if students can avoid error in during their titration, at least they will actually get a very good score in their practical exam. The other one, which is the number two, that's the inaccurate recording of data. When you are recording your data after your titration, after you have avoided error in titration. So, what you should be concerned about while recording your data is that number one, you should not cancel or you should not cancel anything when recording your data because if you cancel, it's going to affect your mark. Also, you don't alter anything like shading with your pen or if uh, probably you made any mistake, then you alter it, you avoid that. Also, you don't use pencil to what to record when you are recording your data after carrying out your titration if you use pencil to record it's going to minus your mark and your score is going to be deducted also you don't trace with pen some students will record their data after titration using pencil and later they will go and trace it with pen if you do that definitely clean very well make sure that the pencil gets dry and you clean very well so that your recording of data is going to be perfect if you use pencil to record your data it's going to be a minus four mark from your titration that you have done while recording that's about two another one we have here is the number three which is the unit conversion yes in chemistry we know that unit is very important so wrong unit or no unit will lead to a zero score so students should avoid writing a wrong unit or they should avoid not putting any unit in their score because if you don't put any unit it actually means that you are writing a single number just a, just an ordinary number in your calculation after you have recorded your data so if you write a wrong unit or you converted your unit wrongly it's going to deduct your mark another one we have here which is the number four which is the what difference between significant figure and decimal places students should take note that in their concentration concentration must be in three significant figure why recording their table that is their title value that one have to be in two decimal places i repeat again your concentration must be in three significant figure why your table of value or title value must be in two decimal places and also your concordance title value must range between plus or minus 0.2 centimeter these are the things you need to take note in order to avoid or to lose mark during your chemistry practical Another one we have here, which is the number five, that is more ratio in stoichiometry and balancing of chemical equation. Yes, students need to have problems in that. For them to write a well-balanced chemical equation, for them to know the mole of each of the reagents or each of the chemicals they are using in their chemistry practical, we actually make them to get or lose some valuable marks. So students should be very concerned and very observant and put their mind in where they are balancing their chemical equation in order for them to get the actual mole ratio for them to have a good mark in their chemistry the next one we have here is number six that is poor time management many students did not know how to manage their time and in exam you'll be given a stipulated time for you to use in chemistry practical why or level it is always two hours paper for them to do so in your time management you need to be very conversant with one or two things which are you should not omit some important steps don't say because you are managing your time then you omit some important steps in order for you to save your time so you don't do that so manage your time do very well schedule your time very well while taking your titration and your sort analysis but that does not mean you should omit some important steps because those steps might give you a good mark if you jump a particular step definitely you are losing mark in your chemistry practical another thing to take note of is this number seven you can see it you have to avoid this what should you avoid this particular formula is always used in chemistry practical which are what your CABA that's condition of your acid multiplied by conjunction of your base all over CB that is what condition of your base multiplied by the volume of your base equals to the NA over NB that is your number of mole of the acid all over number of mole of the base so many students whenever they are working with this formula after they have written this formula what do they do next they will just cancel 
to them they are referring to force multiply in why whenever you do this type of thing it simply means that you have cancelled your work so automatically you are losing your mark instead of this just write force multiply under it then it simplifies that or it, or it shows that you are trying to force multiply so students should avoid cancelling this work once you do this do this cross sign that means you already cancelled your work so that means you are getting an a zero score for that now this is another one number eight which is contamination of sample meaning that if your sample is contaminated definitely is going to affect your mark and it's going to affect your observation and inference this particular aspect is for sort analysis where you are carrying out your sort analysis in either your YEC or your NECO examination or any of your practical chemistry you are carrying on so sort analysis contamination of sample you have to be very observant and make sure that your your sample you are using or the sample you are analyzing on is not contaminated by anything so that you're able to get your actual reading both your actual observation and your inference number nine which is what sample a in solution should be recorded as solution a yes M many students used to make this mistake they will be told in their sort analysis question that dilute sample a or mix sample a in distilled water whenever you mix sample a in distilled water definitely is going to give you a solution of a yes and don't repeat it back again and start calling it sample a because sample a is, is, uh, is going to be in a solid state while solution a is going to be in a liquid state and for you to have dissolved it or dilute it in water definitely is going to form a solution and no more sample again the last one i have here which is number 10 says that you should avoid overconfidence meaning that don't be too confident in yourself try to recheck your work very well when you are done with your exam what do you do you go through it again you check your value the numbers you have written where your multiplication your addition check your work very well recheck your observation don't just assume and also when you are reading question read it carefully don't assume don't don't uh, don't be in a an hurry and also don't be overconfident in a way whereby you bother to read the question completely you just jump to your answer directly so i think with all these 10 errors that students used to make in their exam so if you can avoid all these 10 errors i'm assuring you that your next score in your, in your exam is going to be higher than what you have been having before thank you very much for watching like share comment and subscribe bye